Welcome to Reality on Ground, Real People, Real Issues. And today we are coming to you live from La Sto Rastoteria Restaurante. <laughs> it is a Spanish, or rather an, an Italian restaurant. It's actually located down here at Crested Towers. Uh, that's where we are. And today we're going to talk about travel. Uh, it's something we are so much interested about. Thank you for your feedback about traveling and those ones who are traveling to Uganda. We hope you actually enjoy your flight to and from Uganda. With me to have this conversation today, I'm having two great men in this country. I'm having a Mr. Jacob Shem, Sheminyu. Is that the right word, pronunciation of the last name? Jacob Seminyu is enough. Mm. And I'm glad to be with you this morning. Okay. He's from the Internal Affairs and he's head of uh, public affairs. And I have uh, Mr. Lujia. This one deals with flights. <laughs> Mr. Vianne Lujia from a Civil Aviation Authority. Nice to have you, Mr. Lujia. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me to join you this morning. Absolutely. Mm. So let's start with uh, you, Mr. Lujia. Um, how is Entebbe? Entebbe is fine. Yeah. We are doing quite a lot of things at Entebbe International Airport. Yes. To expand the facilities and improve them for better passenger facilitation. Uh huh. Mm. That is something great. Uh, we love the fact that we have a place where we can actually park our cars and you can fly out of the country. You come back. Previously, we were worried. It was a question there. Um, let's start with the operations. What is your mandate as Civil Aviation Authority? Civil Aviation Authority was mm. established in 1991 mm. with a mandate to advise government on air transport matters generally yeah. in the mm. country. Part of that mandate includes mm. running and operating Entebbe International Airport okay. and 13 other aerodromes spread across the country. Mm. Uh, besides running and operating Entebbe International Airport, mm. we also license air operators, mm. we license aviation crew, mm. we regulate the aviation industry, mm. and we provide air navigation services. Mm. We also provide search and rescue mm. in the unfortunate event mm. that an air crash or incident happens in the air transport industry in Uganda. Okay. So in a brief, mm. that is what we are mandated to do. As Civil Aviation Authority? Yes. Well, that's, that's a good insight. Um, I'm, I'm glad to know that you, we even have rescue team, a part of it. Uh, yes. Jacob Seminu. Yes, sir. Let's talk about the internal affairs. Uh, we already apologize about what happened last Thursday. But let's look at the mandate of internal affairs. I'm trying to draw the line between immigration and the Civil Aviation Authority. Omani, as Ugandans, at times we confuse people. We don't know who an immigration officer is and who is a checking agent is. Well, um, what I know is that internal affairs mandate in uh, the airport is wide. Mm. Because we have police at the airport, mm. we have immigration at, air, at the airport, mm. and uh, so uh, in this case, I'm only going to speak on uh, immigration because yes, it's yeah. the one which is uh, mistaken for being the owner of the airport yes. and for doing everything in the airport. Yes. Uh, most of the time, people think that uh, once you are in the airport, mm. whether it's a cleaner, whether it's a parking officer, yes. it's yes. immigration. But yes. immigration officers dress like I am dressed. Yes. And they sit in specific gazetted points, yes. in counters which are numbered. Uh -huh. And now we have introduced tags, which they will be, uh, which, they, which they are putting on. Mm. So immigration at the airport mm. is supposed to facilitate entry mm. and exit. And in doing that, mm. we have to ensure that Ugandans who are traveling mm. inside the country mm. are entering properly, mm tourists mm. and all other passengers mm. and the people who are going out mm. are going out safely mm. and smoothly. Mm. Uh, there is a, uh, another mandate mm. which uh, we also uh, implement mm. and that is the one of the ensuring that Ugandans are not trafficked out mm. because there is the uh, Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act mm. of uh, 2009, mm. 
which uh, mandates immigration to find out, yes. and other agencies. Yes. So we have put up uh, a desk to screen and, uh, and see yes. whether, and that desk is not for immigration, and immigration is not on it, but they help us to no. identify people who don't have proper uh, documentation, mm. to try and reduce the, on the load on mm. immigration, mm. and it has been working smoothly. Mm. Um, there is a, a report which came out recently, the U.S. report on armed trafficking in persons, mm. and Uganda was hailed for consistently maintaining the position <laughs> of uh, what they call Tier 2, okay. because there are many countries in the region which are in Tier 2 watch list, mm. which is lower, and others like Zambia which are in Tier 3. Mm. But uh, many times we have received allegations mm. uh, of corruption, mm. And we are very sad about it. Ah, what we are Mr. Jacobs, uh, yeah. before you proceed, I love the mandate of, 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 of the internal affairs, of the immigration at the airport. It's, it's, when you listen to it, it's, it's kudos to the good work you're doing about trafficking. Uh, just the other day, I saw Emilian Kaima saying that airport does not have an equipment to check a lot of these goods that are coming through. Uh, which, which particular equipment uh, is he referring to? With regards to counterfeit staffs coming through the country, maybe drugs and the likes. Mm -hmm. Emilian Kaima was on national television and he said that the, the machine that works at Entebbe seems to be not effective as it should be. Yeah, you see, when it comes to such things, mm. there are shared responsibilities. Okay that uh, different agencies mm. work together mm. at the airport like okay. jacob indicated mm. we have police aviation police at the airport as mm. well mm. we have our own aviation security mm. we have other national security agencies yes all represented at the airport yes. including cmi iso mm. eso sfc and all the others yes so in doing the work that we do to prevent what goes out and what comes in mm. All the different government agencies work together. Okay. And most of the equipment they use mm. is actually shared equipment. Okay. And some of it falls within different government okay. entities. Mm. So when Emilian talks about that, mm. he's actually talking about something that falls directly in his mandate. In his mandate. Yes. Okay. Jacob, you, you said uh, part of the mandate is to make sure that the travel documents are real. The reports you're talking about of corruption, extortion, and bribery at the airport actually happening. This early morning I was reading one, just to put you to speed. A one uh, Nachimoli Rose say that a one Julius at the airport. Before she, you even go there, mm, I wanted to, to, to finish my statement. Yes, that please. I am sad because of the nature yes. of reporting. Mm. It is blanket. Yes. It does not even mention a name. Yes. Someone in most cases can't identify mm. the uniform because there are different uniforms. Yes. Ugandans, I don't know what's wrong with us. Mm. Government is willing. Mm. And in cases where they have reported, mm. we have taken action. Mm. And people interdicted and investigations carried out. Mm. But why are Ugandans, mm. including UNTV, yeah. unable mm. to report properly? That's why we're having this conversation, for starters. That's why we're having this conversation, to clear the air. You talked about ex the, the corruption, and you said you're very sad about it, that it's actually happening there. What is the way forward here, Mr. I am Jeff? sad mm. because the allegations mm. are not cor correctly reported. Mm. A few incidents that uh, have happened at the airport, mm. action has been taken, and very punitive action. Mm. So what I don't want the public to, to, to think is that the airport has only immigration. So yes. whatever happens at the airport, yes. they say it's immigration. It is immigration. And yet, like he has explained, mm. almost the entire government mm. is convened at mm. Entebbe. Mm. So mm. when you go there, Sorry. you are meeting the entire government. Mm. All departments of mm. government are represented there, mm. and uh, we want someone to be very specific. Okay. Most of the time, mm. they complain about people who have not even reached the immigration counter, mm. and they say it's immigration. Mm. They, when they see a 
a cleaner, they see handling agents, they see any other person mm. in the airport, mm. even people who simply go there to find a way of living, mm. they think it is immigration. Uh, I think that's the most unfortunate bit of it. Jacob, could you, could you, could you draw the line between a, an immigration officer and a checking agent? I think this will actually make it much more better. I, I think it would be Mr. Uja, uh, who is most capable <laughs> to draw those lines. But yes. I can tell the public mm. how an immigration officer looks like. Yes. And I can tell the public mm. how they can report mm. any incidents of extortion mm. adequately. Okay. How because do we report? an immigration officer mm. is always dressed, always dressed mm. in uniform. And CAA has and provided. It's green and white. It's in green and white, and mm. they have ranks that indicate their levels. Okay. And when you take a picture, you know white. You can take mm. easily mm. if you want. Mm. And uh, our officers are in gazetted points, so mm. sometimes they call me, mm. saying, "Oh, immigration has stopped our person. The person has not even checked in, mm. but they are saying immigration." I you get it. So you need to, to look at the uniform. That it, is. Even, you need to look at the uniform. Yeah. There are different types of uniforms mm. in the airport, which Mr. Luja is going to clarify, mm. which uh, I, I am not very conversant with mm. for other agencies, but yeah. for immigration, they look like I am dressed. Mm. And when you see someone like this, then know you are interacting with an immigration officer. Mm. We have two points of interaction with the public. Mm. At departure, we have some counters which uh, CAA yeah. is expanding for us, of course, at our cost. Wow. <laughs> it's expanding for us. You had that. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, officers sit mm. in that place. So if you find anyone walking around, mm. then that is not immigration business. Mm. Immigration officers are always stationed. Mm. The reason they are stationed at those points is mm. because those are the gazetted points of but entry mm. or exit. Mm. Once you have crossed that point, you are in a, in a, in a no man's land. Mm. And before you cross immigration mm. to get inside, you are in no man's land. Mm. So we are the first you meet. Yeah, the border. And we are mm. the last you meet in mm. Uganda. Yes. The other one is no, man la no man's <laughs> land. So, Mr. Legia, please. Uh, just uh, he made it much more clear. He says that uh, the immigration. It is green and white with a Ugandan badge, of course, and the ranks that differentiate them from the others. Yes. Take us through the other uniforms around your, your airport, because Area this operation. is your airport. Yes, maybe where I'll start from mm. is the different other agencies mm. that he referred to that yeah. provide services yeah. in and around the airport. Mm. Besides immigration, like he indicated, yep. we have handling companies, uh -huh. and these handling companies are two. Mm. There is Enhanced Interview Handling Services yes. and DAS Handling. How does someone from Enhance dress? What is their uniform like? Uh, now, Enhance, mm. first of all, let's establish their location where yes. they inter interface with the passengers. Yes. The moment you enter the departures area mm. and you have been checked mm. through the security check yes. and you get to the check-in counters, yes. That is the key point where you're going to find these handling agents. Enhance. Whether enhance mm. or, uh, or DAS. Mm. Mm. And these are the people who check, first of all, your, your passport mm. uh, to see whether you have the necessary documents and tickets before you reach the counter. Mm. Mm. So, and when you get to the check-in counter, mm. again, it is staff of the handling agents mm. that you are interfacing with okay. as a passenger. Mm. They're the ones who issue you with boarding passes okay. before you go to board. Mm. So they do the preliminary check of documents okay. before the person proceeds mm. to the immigration counter that he's talking about. That is Enhance and DAS. Yes, Enhance and DAS. Yeah, Enhance have yellow tops, mm. but uh, that's the area mm. where you're going to find them. Mm. But before you get to that level, mm. still when you're on departures, mm. the moment you're entering the airport, mm. you have uh, an aviation security officer mm -hmm who is uh, dressed in a blue okay. shirt, mm. and that is a CA staff. That's the one who first looks at your documents, whether you have both a ticket and passport, mm. and you move in. Then they check you at the security machine. Yes. Those are still aviation security, mm. who are civil aviation authority staff. Mm. And after the security machine, 
you proceed to the check-in counter mm. where you are interfacing with the handling agents. Mm. And from the check-in counter, the passenger proceeds to the immigration, immigration counter desk. where they will find the immigration officer. Mm. However, before the security, before the first security check on departures, mm. we recently, government recently established a desk mm. which he alluded to. Mm. And that desk is manned by officials mm. from the Ministry of Gender, Labor. Mm. Mm. The Ministry of Labor. There's an official who mans that desk. Mm. And the purpose is to play a role mm. in controlling human trafficking, trafficking, ensuring that Ugandans, especially mm. those going to some countries in the Middle East, mm. are protected. Mm. We have in the past had very terrible experiences very, very terrible of ones. Ugandans who go to work in some countries mm. and they are tortured. Mm. They are tortured and that is part of the human trafficking he's mm. talking about. Mm. We have also had cases mm. where Ugandans go to countries mm. and uh, involve themselves in wrongdoing. So this desk which is manned by an official from the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development mm. is first of all cross-check mm. whether the person going to those countries has certain documents. Yes. And among the things they check for, if you're going for employment and mm. you have an employment visa, mm. going to the Middle East, to some countries, mm. including UAE, Jordan, mm. Afghanistan, and, and the like, mm. they will check out whether you have a labor letter mm. from the Ministry of Gender, yes. Labor and Social Development. Mm. They will also ask you whether you have an Interpol certificate. Mm. Those two certificate of good conduct. Certificate of good conduct. Mm. Those two documents are key, mm. and those are cross-checked by that, that labor desk. officer mm. at that desk. Mm. Now that those are also not staff of CAA, like you but they are government. <laughs> yes, they are government okay. operating at at the airport. I understand, mm. um, Mr. Jacob. Um, a quick one here. Uh, you said that um, the officers in their mandated booth. Those are the immigration officers. And their allegations from travelers that these are the people who have been asking for $200, $500 in those booths. These are people who have come forward and uh, their comments, um, they, they were through all over Facebook. They, they went as far as identifying their ticket number, the word, the day. And how best can we streamline this? How can someone report? Do we have hotlines where someone can come and say, you know what, I was treated like this at the airport? We have a line mm. where someone can report, mm. which I'm going to tell people. Yeah. We have emails, mm. not one, I think two emails, mm. where someone can securely report. Okay. But as long as you report like NTV reported, mm blanket but we are here to clear that job. yes 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 as long as you report like that mm. then we are not going to get anywhere mm. now you received allegations mm. do you know who is involved because it can't be the entire airport of course neither can it be the entire immigration of course the time when it took place mm. do you have a picture of that person mm. some portfolio of evidence mm. that shows the like do you have a number of the person maybe if we asked you to drop mobile money on his mm. account mm. do you can you even take a picture of where it was because sometimes someone says mm. that immigration has stopped me when it is in the parking we have received <laughs> those calls in the parking. yes others call immigration has stopped me hey. stopped you where mm. then you discover a person missed a flight yes you get it I get it. so someone should give us a, a reduce to the person who is committing an offense mm. and we take uh, administrative take action. action and we have done that in the past mm. and i don't think it's continuing and mm. because one of the things that was giving us a, a lot of headache mm. was the the, the 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 screening of those who are going outside for work mm. now the ministry of gender labor and social development has uh, at least sent an officer there mm. who ensures that they have those travel documents mm. so if someone asks you for money and you know mm. you know that it is illegal mm. you know that it's also unfair for you mm. why don't you give us reasonable evidence take a picture take a picture mm of the person who is asking of late they, they Be love recording, you know? because we can we can we can recognize mm. someone even if you took from behind because i know he's going to clear you yeah. and then 
So you can come back again and take the picture. <laughs> And uh, and and uh, uh, it's also very unfair mm. to, 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 to the entire immigration mm. and the ministry yeah. and even the people of Uganda yeah. that you are alleging that there is corruption when, when, when you can't actually say mm. this is exactly mm. what has happened. Mm. Because when you say Jacob, we are looking for a way forward here. Yes, that yes, was done. We, we, we looked at that. Apologies were made for that. Yeah. How best can we move from the this step forward? For Ugandans mm. to know that it's their right mm. to be facilitated, mm. free of charge. The officers who are in the airport mm. have been paid. Mm. Whether they work for the Ministry of Internal Affairs mm. or CAA or other agencies yes. have been paid, and what they are doing there mm. is to facilitate you unless there are dues that one is required to pay mm. or anything. Mm. But uh, once a Ugandan is traveling, mm. then, and someone asks for money, mm. just look for a way mm. of either taking a picture mm. smartly mm. or getting his number mm. or asking the people who work around there his name mm. or looking for anybody else mm. who is not dressed like him Yes. and looks responsible and report that matter okay. or you can go and report at the last counter then we take up the matter mm. there is someone who did, who did like that mm. and an action was taken because uh, we have another checkpoint mm. at the, 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 the pre-boarding mm. we have uh, aviation security there mm. someone if you think you have been mistreated mm. you should report now to to, to before you even at board. least that just before you board mm. so that the person at that time is still uh, on the shift mm. so they can come and, 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 and you show them mm. and then they are able to identify the person and we proceed from there because it's not good to make blanket allegations okay. it's not fair to us okay, to all Mr. of Jacob, us what number can someone call in case they are, they are faced with such a situation anybody who is faced with such a challenge can call 0414 Five nine, five nine four five. And the email is info at mia. dot go. dot ug. The second one is info at immigration. dot go. dot ug. I will be able to get uh, the, the the complete and the email. Okay, Mr. Lujia, fast forward. Uh, let, let's look at you at the airport. The maintenance, how is the maintenance at the airport? You're saying you're doing some works at the airport, yes. but some things are old, Mr. Viani. What's mm. the way forward here? Okay, I'm going to get there, yes. but I want to start from where he ended, yeah. about the reporting in case of any of these allegations. Allegations, yes. Uh, we, as the people in charge of the airport, generally, mm. have taken these allegations very seriously yes. from the time they started coming. Mm. And we have already about a month ago. Compliment, not a month, mm. much earlier, mm. beginning of the year. Oh yeah, we've been doing a lot mm. to ensure that passengers have a smooth experience. Mm. We have put in place announcements mm. on departure, yeah. and they are regularly read, mm. uh, cautioning passengers not to, to be duped mm. or lured into paying money in exchange for any favor or service at the airport. Mm. And these announcements mention the numbers on which they can call yes. in case of a challenge. Mm. He has given you the numbers mm. for immigration specific. Yes. But we have also added the number of the general manager of general. the airport. I like himself. that. Uh, this early morning, and yesterday, yes. Misha Guang was traveling out of this country. And he took a picture of that public announcement on that uh, stand uh, kind of advertisement. Yes. And I think it's a great initiative. Yes, indeed. Because so that the complaint is addressed in real time. Mm. We have had a challenge whether someone goes through the airport mm. and after going through, they go to social media and they start complain. ranting, mm. they start complaining when it is already too late yeah. and they are not providing details. Yes. But when you call while you're still at the airport mm. or report while there, mm. we are actually able to address the matter in, in real, real time. time. Yeah. It helps us. Mm. But in case you have gone through and not been able to report, mm. We, we can still reach us on email aviation at caa.co.ug. Mm. So you request that you provide us with the details of whatever may have happened. Mm. Then we use those details to investigate and the we give feedback. Mm. Mm. And we have conducted a lot of investigations on previous cases. Mm. Apparently, mm. many of the cases which have been investigated, mm. majority have been found either not to be based on correct information mm. where a passenger lacked information. Mm. I can give you one or two examples. Mm. There is a passenger who bought a fake ticket 
from uh, somewhere agent. online, from yeah. an agent online. Mm. He came to the airport, mm. reached the handling agents, mm. and the, the ticket was not telling. He could mm. not proceed to travel. Mm. That person went ranting on social media that mm. these people have they stopped, stopped me from traveling. <laughs> when we investigated, we discovered that the ticket the passenger had was, was a fake, fake ticket. Yeah. So the person could not travel at all. Yeah. Another one, mm. Alia Ron, was traveling to China. Mm. And he interfaced with some handling agents of DAS. Mm. They stopped him from traveling. Mm. And he went to social media, still ranting and mm. complaining. Mm. When we deeply investigated the matter, mm. we discovered that the person was going to China for studies. Mm. He had a one-way ticket, which is okay. Mm. But the studies he was going for was a short study period of yeah. one month. Yeah. It was a one-month study period, mm. one-way ticket. Mm. And the admission letter he had mm. was indicating that uh, admission was subject to having completed registration before a particular date. Mm. Now this person was traveling on Past a date when point. the registration date had elapsed ah. and the person had not registered. I hear you. So he was stopped for good reasons, mm. but he went ranting mm. and accusing all sorts of agents. Uh, Mr. Viani, just yes. a quick one before I run out of time. I have two minutes here. Um, in case I've come from wherever I've come through and I have extra luggage, do you have an office where we can go and we, we pay for that extra luggage in case I have extra luggage? It is still at that very handling counter. Handling counter. Yes. I can exactly. pay the extra one. You still, uh, and each airline has a different policy on yeah. luggage. Mm. So it, depending on which airline you're traveling with, mm. they have uh, specific mm. policies that differ from one airline to another. Okay. But the handling agent who handles on behalf mm. of the airline mm. advises you on what to do at that very counter. Oh. You had also hinted on what we are doing. The maintenance. In the maintenance. Yes. Yes, we are doing a lot, not just maintenance. Mm. Currently, the facilities at NTV mm. uh, have been now stretched by mm. the growing number of passengers. Mm. Last year we had 1.6 million passengers, mm. which is a growth. We are having a 7% growth yeah. annually. Mm. And because of that growth, mm. we had a, a master plan which projects what we are going to have. Mm. And we are doing a lot of expansion works in mm. line with the master plan. Mm. We are currently expanding the passenger terminal building mm. to expand the departures and arrivals areas. Mm. That work is ongoing and will be completed next year. Wow. There is also other work for mm. a new cargo center being erected yeah. so that once it is complete by the end of this year, we raise down mm. the old cargo facilities that mm. are currently there and we have so the that new facilities can, of cargo can be moved to the new one. Okay. And where that cargo center has been, we are going to erect a new terminal building, completely new, wow. connecting to the current terminal. Big projects there, yes, Viade. <laughs> well, there you have it. You heard from Jacob uh, Seminu and, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Viani Lujia. I'm sure you're now illuminated on what needs to be done at the airport. Don't be duped, don't be fooled, don't be ripped off any money by any other officer. The ones from immigration are wearing green and white. And the others, just as Mr. Luja explained about them. So their numbers there, please win at the airport. Keep note, look for those numbers. The numbers are there and they are toll free. There are emails, you can actually send your complaint, but please, it's better you complain when you're still within the airport that this could be handled as expeditiously. Well, that was our conversation. Thank you so much for the feedback online and your answers have been actually, your questions have been answered here. And it's still morning at NTV. I'm Andrew Chamagero Omuntuawansi.